Today I got something really exciting in the mail and I think we should go inside and take a look. If you saw my last video, you might have noticed that my fig tree was dead. It didn't come back. Well, I was lucky to get one small tiny little stick to, to actually <laughs> set some roots and uh, uh, we will see. <laughs> but that's yay high and I wanted something bigger. So I went online on eBay, my favorite go-to place for getting weird things from the internet. And I was searching for fig trees. I was searching for fig uh, cuttings. The Chicago Hardy that I've been growing for many years now was something I got from Spain, I think. It was some cuttings years ago and uh, it's been turning out nice. But I couldn't find any decent source for Chicago Hardy fig. So I looked up something else and I came over something called Ronde de Bordeaux. Thank you, Google Translate. <sighs> yeah, I don't know a little French. We, we just came from Paris yesterday and I, I don't know that language. Anyway, Ronde, Ronde de Bordeaux is supposed to be just as tasty and almost as cold hardy as the Chicago fig. So I thought, yeah, let's just try it out. And I went online, I was searching on eBay for cuttings and I ended up with something that was, I'm not sure if it was a cutting or if it was a livestock or if it was whatever it is. But uh, yeah, it's heavy. So um, I'm hoping there's a live plant in here and uh, we will just have to open this sucker up and see what we have. If it's something we can plant directly into the greenhouse or if it's something that we need to do something with before we get so far. I'm gonna bring you closer. You might be able to tell that I am really excited about this. So let's crack this thing up. I am not sure what to expect here, but uh, it's dripping soil. So uh, my hope is that it's a live plant, but we will, okay. <laughs> this might look like a hen house of some sorts. Uh, okay, well at least this is decent packing. It's gonna be a mess here. Ah, I can see figs. Well, not figs, but a tree at least. And it's alive. And let me check, yep, there's soil. Ah, beautiful. Uh, how can I do this without taking apart the whole office? Have to be careful. Wow. Now this is something I didn't expect from an eBay listing. It seems like <laughs> these people are actually doing this for a living. And uh, it is looking darn good. I, yeah, I'm just gonna have to move the camera again. Just hold on. Well, I'll be darned. This thing is just huge. I wasn't expecting this at all, to be honest. And it wasn't too expensive either. So now I think I have a source for buying exotic things online, on eBay of all things. So this is called the Ronde de Bordeaux, as I stated, and um, it's gonna replace my Chicago Hardy thing in the greenhouse. Hopefully this will be a long-term project. I'm gonna do whatever I can in the hands of the above people to um, really keep this thing going. I'm going to do so many different things. First of all, I'm gonna plant it in another space than where it used to grow. And also I'm gonna have some plans for how to keep this thing alive in the winter time. So why don't we just head outside into the greenhouse and uh, get this sucker in the soil? Let's just check the roots. Wow. It even has new growth and white roots. That's just amazing for the transportation. Well, it was shipped really fast. I think it took four or five days or something from France. 
uh, I got it with express shipping because I never get things shipped in the mail for a long time if it's something that is going to survive. So uh, yeah, let's head outside. I used to have my fig tree over here. This was the place where I put it once I moved it outside into the greenhouse. I had it growing for a full season indoors. Then I moved it outside here for... Uh, I think it was four years ago or something. I placed it there. It's a horrible placement, I know, but I had other plants here and uh, I figured I'll just throw it in there, see if it survives and then just do whatever adjustments I needed to do. In the beginning, I wanted to insulate um, this fig tree in the winter time. And that was okay the first season when it was small and it was easy to confine it over here. But once it started to really grow and it even touched the ceiling here, it, it was so hard to do that. So this year I ended up not doing any special insulation and um, yeah, it's gone. So I needed to think in other directions. Then I thought maybe if I just place the tree in the middle of the greenhouse, straight in the middle of the greenhouse. The problem is that that's kind of the walkway and uh, it would be such a hassle <laughs> to have it grow there for many years and, and get really big. And it would kind of just end up being the one and only thing in the greenhouse. So my third and final decision was to allocate some of the bed space in this raised bed that I use for peppers. To just have the fig tree growing in, in one side. Uh, I get it so far into the greenhouse that it really isn't a problem with the height. And also, I can do whatever I want with it. If I want to trim it and try to keep it a little bit dense, then I can do that. If I want to keep it going in the different directions, I can maybe have it grow in, in the width or the length of the bed. And uh, yeah sacrifice some some space for other plants I, I have plenty of space there's so much space here i i don't even need to grow things everywhere it's it's just <laughs> it's such a big greenhouse so so i can i can really um see that um i can take some of the space to to growing the fig tree so i'm going to plant it here in my raised bed and i'm gonna have um this is some uh, laurel i think uh, i think it's called laurel Laubär in Norwegian and also I have uh, rosemary so these are plants that really don't like the winter time so what I am thinking of doing is kind of creating a box in the winter time where I can fully insulate it and also maybe have some supplemental heating just inside that box that way I'm able to really keep this going for many years I hope Oh, well, let's have to just have to wait and see. Once it's gross, <laughs> I I really don't know what to do with it. So um, let's just get it in the ground and see um, see how it looks. Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> The hole has been dug and now it is time to try to fit the plant or the tree inside the hole. And what we're looking for here is trying to find the direction where the tree is going. Now, uh, what's important when you're growing something indoors, outdoors, big, large, small, whatever you're growing, you want to have a nice branch structure. If you're doing something for the long run, then that is a really important point. And as you can see here, there's a lot of crossings and there's so many strange things happening here. And there's a lot of, as you can see on the tree here, there is a lot of branches coming all the way down from the soil and that's something that we're going to live with for now but hopefully in the future if this tree survives the winter and does well in the winter then I will try to maybe get it to grow one main branch uh, up to about this height and then branch out. So I want to get rid of of everything else but then we have to choose a main branch for the tree that's not the time right now the thing that I want to do now is trying to get something where I see the dominant ones are going in the length of the bed and these two seems to be the dominant ones and if we turn it like this 
then that's just looking perfect. We got some side growth here and there, but we get the two main branches going like this and it will really open up in the greenhouse and, and make sure that I'm able to, to pass on both sides. If I have it the other way, then it will grow more in this direction and uh, it wouldn't be as good. So I think we're gonna stick with this and uh, the only thing we're gonna do is just backfill with, with soil. I'm not gonna fertilize it straight away. I'm just gonna get it to, to set roots and uh, get acclimated to the greenhouse. It's, uh, it's been fairly warm here the last days, but now it's finally cooled down a little bit. But I'm keeping the ventilation going as good as I can. So um, hopefully it will take to, to the new growing environment. And uh, also, I, I'm guessing that this has been growing in full sun in France. So um, I'm not too worried about having it exposed to a lot of direct sunlight in, in the daytime. So I think that's the only thing that we're gonna do for now. And uh, let's just cross our fingers that this tree really takes to the soil here in Norway. And um, we will just have to wait and see what's happening. I'm not gonna, if, if it starts to set fruits, I'm, I'm guessing it might do that. It might get a, a really big growth boost now and start setting fruits. And if it does, I'm gonna pick everything off. I don't want to have any fruits the first or the second year. Maybe, maybe the second year. Not sure. We will have to see how it grows. But at least I'm going to cut off everything this year. I want to encourage the tree to grow. And uh, yeah, we will just have to take the, the heating problem when we get to the, to the winter time. And uh, all we can do for now is just enjoying this beautiful, beautiful tree. And uh, the smell, the fragrance is so darn good and uh, I, I just can't imagine living without having a, a fig tree. It's uh, such a nice and, and beautiful thing to grow. So um, yeah, I don't know, are you growing any fig trees? I know a lot of you people that live way down south from where I live are, uh, are used to a climate where you can actually grow fig trees, so I'm curious. If you grow fig trees, uh, what variety are you growing? I'm, I'm just trying to get into the different types of fig trees. And um, I really want to experiment with this. If this is a, a plant and a rootstock that really takes a hold to the soil and the weather, I want to try grafting. And then I will have to need your help to, um, to maybe help me get a hold of some cool graftings that I can try on this plant and see if that's something we can uh, manage up here in uh, the cold, harsh winters of Norway. Okay, that's it for this time. This has been Christopher saying may the force be with you and uh, I'm gonna cuddle with my uh, newly acquired uh, tree here and uh, just take the evening. So uh, see you later, bye.